and uh, we have some exciting lightning talks for our first session of lightning talks today um, and some really interesting talks and some slides uh, for us to discuss and uh, and enjoy um, some rules for the session I'll be quite strict with the time you have 10 minutes uh, per presentation and we'll leave questions to last okay so Without further ado, our first presentation uh, comes from the guys uh, in Switzerland uh, by Lars Kayser from Urban Equipping. And this presentation will be about participatory project funding for grassroots and climate projects experiences. Um, so, without further ado, Lars, please. Thank you. Do you have a pointer? Yes, yeah. Or a clicker? Perfect. I'll use the time before you start the timer. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. So, good morning. My name is Lars. Uh, I'm from Zurich. Um, I'm going to talk. use the next 10 minutes to talk about the participatory budgeting in Switzerland and how it's involved into like this different kind of instrument where we actually use more, uh, it's more kind of a participatory project funding. So I'm from the association Urban Equipe. We do a lot of different uh, participation, um, public participation. Um, so we go into the roads and, uh, and build stuff with the people, do participatory budgeting, but also do a little bit of DCDM on the side. Uh, that's why we're here. Short introduction, why um, participatory budgeting became relevant in Switzerland. And there's, I would say, like two reasons. It's a bit simplified, but uh, one reason is because smart cities have them. So we had a lot of cities that wanted to implement smart city strategies, and they looked around and they said, okay, all smart cities on the world, Barcelona, Helsinki, whatever, they uh, all have participatory budgeting, so we need participatory budgeting as well. That was a bit problematic because when you started one of those processes, you need to invent like the or find out what the demand for the participatory budget was during the process. And then after a few um, processes, we uh, also, now it's developing into this other form uh, where we're re really trying to find a usefulness for, these, for this small instrument um, for hyper-local and neighborhood climate action. Um, the goals of participatory budgets in Switzerland are to democratize the neighborhood development, to encourage creative ideas for neighborhoods and just to create like a sense of working together, of, of achieving goals together, um, not only with the, within the population, but also within the public and uh, between the public and the city administration. There's a huge difference um, to participatory budgets done elsewhere than to one the ones done in Switzerland. The ones in Switzerland are on the right, and that's why we started calling them participatory project funding they require a self-implementation of the final idea by the person that submitted the idea. That has legal reasons because we couldn't just invent uh, or introduce a new, um, t uh, new tool of democracy without having to undergo like real substantial um, changes in the constitution. So the, the type on the right was actually the only one um, that was feasible to do in like a short short term basis to implement and have first test runs. However, this also kind of creates a large focus on volunteer work, on people uh, working or engaging in their network without uh, or in their neighborhood without pay, um, as opposed to other participatory projects where the city is then responsible for the implementation. And we'll be talking about these. Uh, today. So, since 2000 and I would say 19, I think that's when the city of Lausanne started. Muriel isn't here, but she would represent that. She's uh, at the conference as well. There have been quite a lot of different uh, projects um, in Switzerland, ranging with a various degree of budgets. Um, and uh, you can see that it wouldn't have worked without Decidim. So, each of these projects um, with the DCDIM logo, of course, use uh, DCDIM. And we can see that most of them are just single projects, so they don't uh, reoccur in a regular interval. And that has to do with the fact that it's still relatively new, that we're still making the first experiences with the project, 
um, and some of them are just used as specific points. For example, the city of Thun, um, they implemented their, uh, or they used their participatory budget while doing a new strategy for sustainability for the city, and they wanted to like um, make the people feel that they were also involved in this, in that everyone's involved together in this, and that's why they funded. Uh, next to the sustainability stuff by the city, they also funded ideas by the population. What are typical ideas that were funded in these projects? Um, a wide degree. So we have a lot of workshop type um, kinds of projects that were funded. On the left you can see a, a bicycle repair workshop which took place for a couple of uh, intervals with a deal of like, uh, or with the idea of spreading knowledge. There was a huge uh, camping um, event in a park where 200 families came together and did a huge camping uh, event in, the p yeah, in, a, in a public park. Then there's a lot of DIY practical building stuff in public spaces, so creating spaces, creating, uh, spaces for shade, for example, where there's a lot of sunshine, but also like in innovative ways of connecting people because you had like these benches where everyone was facing away from each other and people were like, why? Let's just build a table inside and then we can eat our lunch or dinner uh, together and face each other and discuss about uh, politics or whatever. And also, five minutes? Perfect. And also we have uh, quite a few projects that were introduced or um, that we did in collaboration with uh, youth organizations. So this was an idea that was uh, implemented, that actually won funding. It was, uh, um, so there were like, th I think there were like 13, 14 year olds, a couple of teenagers. They had the problem that they wanted to skate in the neighborhood, but uh, every time they started skating, everyone was really annoyed and was really loud. So they developed the idea of let's do some mobile skate ramps. And then again, of course, everybody from, from the neighborhood also thought this was a great idea because if they skated in their vicinity, they could just tell them to move the thing away, um, which is why they uh, also got funding. It's really cool to see that you have 13-year-olds actively participating in such a process, uh, a company, of course, by the youth organization and the social workers, but they, that they can get funding. I think for them, it's also great to see that they're not like excluded or or find a place in in society for them yes so not going to go into this table but i'm trying to t take a few factors which are relevant um these are like the most recent projects in in switzerland the question is which factors are relevant if you want to compare them to each other um and we can see Usually you have a budget of about one franc to two francs fifty per inhabitant in the perimeter. Um, about roughly between three and fifteen thousand francs or euros, it's about one to one right now, um, per idea that was funded. So it's not a lot compared to pro public projects, but it's enough to make a lot of things happen in, on a voluntary basis. Um, sometimes I have like 10 to 90 percent of ideas that are um, kicked out of the process during the process and that has to do with the fact that or with the problem that you need to scale um, if you have a project on the neighborhood basis you can really accompany them you can make a, you can make the process acceptable accessible start off with just a title and description text and then take them through the process and develop this kind of project management so at the end in the voting they already have like their their uh, a concept on which which is uh, voted on but you can also have like a really a process for example for an entire city if you don't have the resources to fund this coaching that um, already has uh, really high requirements at the beginning and then is really really close to just usual project funding actually yes so it's not going, it's not continuing. There we go. Um, I think the biggest challenge in these processes is the dynamics between volunteer work and the dynamics in the city administrations. So you have on the one side, people that are, are donating a lot of time and, and energy, um, 
but don't always have the opportunity to do that because of personal reasons, because of personal constraints also. Um, and the, the, the time frame or the, like the, the, the span of the interest in such a problem is, uh, in such a project is, is really short. So if you want to engage, you want to have results as soon as possible. And then on the other side, you have like the city administration, which of course uh, works much more slowly and needs to be much more thoroughly. And, and that cre creates a uh, degree of friction. So we usually say um, we need respect for both sides. And that's one of the advantages of this process is that you can really show how the other side works. So we, as, a, as Urban Equip, we, we coach the administrations to have like a really benevolent and supportive attitude, uh, even for unfinished ideas. And on the other side, for voluntary uh, work with the people, it's really important that they also see what's happening behind the scenes in the cities. Yes. And, well, it skipped, it skipped the conclusion, but the conclusion basically is um, we believe that this is a really good format um, to, to offer the possibility for, for uh, some really small-scale neighborhood-type um, action, specifically with climate projects, because we require to move together. We require to have uh, more social networks in the eco-social uh, transformation. Um, however, it's like an accompaniment. So if we had like a classical participatory budget in Switzerland as well, I mean, if we have both, that would even be better because it's not really the same thing. I think my time's up. So thank you very much. Round of applause for Lars. Wonderful, wonderful. Well done. So, up next, we have Bordering Horizons, the CDM as a tool outside the institutional environment from Alras.